Good afternoon, everyone, well, or whatever time of day this message is reaching you. Uh, it is Wednesday, December 15th, and we are on our second community meeting for the month of December for Tanzu Community Edition. Thank you all so much for joining us. I'm going to get our agenda pulled up so that we can all see it. For those of you that don't know, we have two types of meetings here in our community. We have our community meetings and our office hours. Uh, the community meeting, which is what this is, is where we go over a lot of announcements and anything that is for the general edification of the public. Whereas our office hours are a more open format where we take your questions um, and understand what you're having any difficulties with. Um, and today we've got a bit of an agenda for you. So I'm going to post that link in the chat. And then um, get this shared so that we can all see it. Okay, so I have welcomed you and told you what the objective of this meeting is. Uh, Announcements. So we are not going to have any meetings for the next three weeks, uh, next week, the week after, or the first week of the new year in observance of holidays. So please take this opportunity to rest um, so that we can all come back next year energized and ready to push the project forward even more. Uh, secondly, we have an adopters.md file uh, in our repository. I know we have the show and tell area in our discussions, and this is a, a it's very similar, um, but a bit bigger. So if you're using TCE in a way that you would like to share, um, we definitely would like that from you. So you can submit a PR against uh, that adopters.md file, which is in the top level directory of the repository, so that we can learn about all of the many ways that folks are using Tons of Community Edition. Uh, Next, we have uh, the KubeCon Europe CFP closing on Friday. If you are interested in submitting something uh, that refers or uses uh, Tanzu Community Edition, please let us know if you would like us to help with that. I'm working on one right now um, because I am not super great at planning ahead. So uh, if you are in a similar boat or just want an extra pair of eyes on what it is that you're working on, uh, please do let us know in the Slack channel. We are here to help you. Um, and for our community shout outs, I have one. Um, we had a wonderful blog from Dennis um, this week. You can see it in the show and tell. I'll also post a copy of it here in the notes. Um, and we want to say thank you very much uh, for, for that blog. Um, the next thing we have in our agenda, we want to introduce you to Cluster API, um, which is a project that is very related to uh, Tons of Community Edition and everything that we're doing with uh, the all of the uh, all of the Tanzu ecosystem. So I want to hand it over to uh, Fabrizio uh, to give us a bit of a of an introduction to Cluster API. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Fabrizio Pandini, and first of all, thank you for uh, asking me to join this meeting. And um, yeah, let, let, let me briefly introduce uh, Cluster API. So Cluster API it is, a, uh, is a project under the uh, umbrella of SIG Cluster Life Cycle. SIG Cluster Life Cycle is, is basically a special interest uh, group uh, in, uh, in the Kubernetes org that focus on cluster life cycle. So creating a cluster, upgrading cluster, everything, everything related to, to the cluster. And uh, Cluster API as a project started uh, three years and so, uh, more or less uh, ago. And, and the goal of this project was quite ambitious. So was, let, let's make uh, uh, Cluster Lifecycle boring. Let's, let's make it uh, ubiquitous. So the same on all, 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 all the infrastructures. And uh, let, let's make it uh, declarative. So uh, at, at its core, basically with Cluster API, you can create your cluster, your machine in the same way that you create your pods and your deployments. So you, you have similar constructs. You have machine, machine deployments. In Kubernetes, you have pod and, and, and deployment and, and stuff like that. The, the, uh, uh, the project uh, 
uh, w went a, a, a long way uh, and uh, we reached the B1-0 uh, uh, recently in, in October uh, with a nice blog post that you can find in CNCF that shows all the companies that are using Cluster API in production. I think that one, one of the, the main point of Cluster API, a part of being declarative, it, 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 is a, it is also really extensible. So Cluster API is what we call the provider model. So uh, basically there is a core engine and then there are provider, uh, one for each infrastructure. There are really many out there. Uh, and in, in TCE, uh, I know that we are using the Docker provider, the Sphere provider, the AWS provider. Uh, maybe I'm not up to date on all, all the type of infrastructure, the Azure one probably, and, uh, but out there, there are uh, many uh, uh, for different type of infrastructure, uh, all community maintained and, uh, and yeah, the, 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 the last things that, uh, that is always nice to talk about is that like TCE, Cluster API is really a community. Uh, so we have uh, also our meetings every Wednesday uh, and uh, they, there are a lot of people from different companies. Discussion is always interesting. So if you are interested in this, in, in this topic, uh, feel free to join. And now I stop. If there are some questions, uh, please feel free to ask me anything. Yeah, do we have anyone that has a question about Cluster API or how it's related to uh, Tanzu Community Edition or anything in that vein? Okay, if there are no questions, oh, I um, see well, Jorge uh, talking. Please, Jorge. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, yeah, I wonder why or if there is any plan to make a Docker or Podman or something like that, uh, any runtime, container runtime on your laptop and infrastructure provider, because I know there is, there is CAPD, but CAPD is not really a, a pure infrastructure uh, provider per se. So the, 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 that's, a, that's a nice question. So uh, CAPD started like a, a development project, a let's test cluster API locally. And then uh, we, we saw over time uh, uh, interesting usage of it. There was also some variation uh, instead of develop, developing uh, uh, CAPD locally, de developing CAPD in a Kubernetes cluster, stuff like that. Now uh, we recently opened an issue uh, uh, trying to figure it out what, what will be the, the future of CAPD given the um, the change of policy uh, of licensing model from Docker. Uh, and so basically we are going to explore other option, uh, interface container D directly, interface uh, Podman, uh, or I don't know, we, we, we have it's something that we have to explore. But uh, if you are interested in the topic, there is an issue. I will link the issue in the, in the chat later and I, kindly ask to go there and give your input. We, we will try to do our best to address that. It looks like uh, Sean dropped the link in the chat there. Um, thank you, Sean. Well, thank you, Sean. Nolan, I see your hand. Yeah, I was, uh, hopefully my audio is working. Um, I was wondering about the decision, the design decision to do uh, bootstrap clusters that then pivot into management clusters instead of like a, more of a client side library or, or CLI. Um, can you speak to that at all? Yeah, so let me say we are getting there in stages. So we want, uh, uh, but uh, due to the declarative model of cluster API, basically the, we, we, we were facing a chicken egg problem. We need a cluster to spin up other clusters. And uh, using a bootstrap cluster was convenient given that uh, uh, at the time the, the kind was basically created. We, I also, uh, some of us contributed also to kind. Uh, 
um, uh, stuff like that. So it, it, it was convenient. In the first release, we have a, a fairly, let me say, um, a closed project that, that was creating a bootstrap cluster uh, and, and pivoting. Uh, now with cluster cutter, we have something that is more composable, so it allows you to pick the, your own cluster. It's, it, uh, it's, it's, it's more composable. What we are looking for is something le like uh, KCP, the project that, uh, that folks uh, uh, are working on. So it is, it is basically uh, a binary that contains a, a really a minimal um, API server that can handle CRD. And the idea is to use this binary as a, a seed to create the first cluster and then go, go on to like that. So it, it is, we got there, uh, we are getting there by step. Uh, and the, the idea is that we, we should reduce the time to cluster. Now it takes a little bit longer that, that we want, but uh, yeah, we will get there. Okay, cool. I, I wasn't familiar that that's what KCP did, but I'm glad to see we're moving towards making it a binary that kind of mocks a cluster instead of being a, a full cluster. Thank you, Nolan. And uh, thanks, Robert, for sharing that link in the chat to your presentation um, that is related to cluster API. Do we have any other questions for Fabrizio before we uh, move on? Uh, if, if there are no questions, I, I only would like to say thank you to TCE uh, community because they are making two things that are really important for us. First of all, they are, you are putting a nice uh, UX on top of uh, our bootstrap sequence and uh, that, that basically brings uh, Cluster API near the user. And second, you are really uh, unlocking the, the potential. So creating a cluster is just the is only the beginning, and to see with the package uh, and uh, all the goodness that it is creating, basically unlocks the power of the cluster for the developers, which basically is bring is this bridging two worlds. And I really like uh, the what is achieving. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on to our engineering updates. Oh, excuse me, I skipped the PM updates. Okay. Um, so um, the following is also the stuff I'm about to talk about is also going to go out in all of the usual places like the mailing list and the you know the google group and the slack channel um but i want to i didn't want to blindside anybody with getting an email about something we could have just talked about while we were here um we want to make you aware of two developments that are going to affect the release currently in development 0 0.10 and also the published high level roadmap which is roadmap.md in the root of the GitHub project. The first one is that while we were preparing release candidate three, we discovered that the build of Antria CNI that we had isn't suitable for us to ship in terms of community edition. In order to address it, we need to collaborate with other groups inside VMware. They're not gonna be able to remedy it until after the new year. So as of now, we expect to have an RC3 in early January, general availability not long after that. And we should have, unlike RC1 and RC2, we should be able to publish OVAs both for the GA as we ordinarily would, but from now on for the release candidates also, which actually makes the release candidates useful. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that in planning work for the core engineering team, we prioritized some work recently on foundational technologies that will untangle downstream dependencies, allowing tons of community addition to innovate and release with more agility on a more regular cadence. Um, you know, it, it basically cuts some of the apron strings and gives us that space for 
the team and the community to innovate. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll be restating the high level roadmap and I will post an update to roadmap.md soon. But that's going to mean that a little bit of the things that you see in zero to three months, specifically the developer oriented projects and the Bitnami library are going to come a bit later. So we look forward to your help in the future, prioritizing development and technology inclusions in TCE. Um, you know, not, not, the, not the best news, but not the worst, and it's going to result in much better product and much freer processes for us. Any questions? Awesome. Thank you, Roger. Uh, okay, engineering updates. Cool, is that me? I believe so. All right. Um, so Roger kind of hit on the V0 10 0 release update. Um, we're untangling things and we'll have some more news as we get farther down that track. The other engineering update that I want to give is a list of proposals we currently have um, open. So I won't waste all your time by describing these proposals in depth, but if the short description I'm about to give interests you, you can click on the link in the HackMD. We welcome comments in the issue or the design docs, which some of them do have design docs linked to them. Um, and if you do wanna talk in a more synchronous manner about some of these proposals, you can hit us up in Slack or come to office hours. The proposals we have open right now, um, 2686 is a proposal on proposals. Um, we are vetting our process to make this more formalized and allow y'all to give input on the things we're thinking about doing. 2266 is the most established proposal that is replacing the Tanzu existing standalone cluster model with a new, more minimal bootstrapping model. Um, that one is very close to getting approved. I think we are uh, currently addressing the most important engineering topic of all, which is what to name it. Uh, 2462 and 2689 are about bringing new packages into our package repository, namely KPAC uh, and uh, Cert Injection Webhook. 2717 is a behemoth that's actively being written. This is how we are going to approach creating a decoupled release of Community Edition from our downstream product. So this is how we're going to be able to ship newer versions of Kubernetes, Entrea, um, and even introduce things like stable channels and alpha channels with you know, different ways that you can deploy uh, and distribute community edition. And then the last one's quite small, but uh, 1723, we moved from a pending proposal to an accepted proposal. Um, it's some enhancements on our image linter process. Um, to ensure that we're linting for images that might have licensing issues in a more eloquent manner. And that is it. So again, if any of those piqued your interest, uh, bookmark it, check it out, read through it, add comments, and uh, do let us know in Slack or in an office hours if you wanna talk about some of these in, a, in greater depth. Thanks. Can I give a comment here? Just cause you I'd know, love we can't to hear go it. in meeting. Yeah, we can't go a meeting. First of all, I love that you're wearing a puffer on the call. Good call. That's a, a, a good good wear. Second Thank of all, you. I you seem to be missing the most important comment, which I mean, a proposal which has yet to be written, which is the build the Steve platform release proposal, which is out of the box. I can just use it for my work. I'm waiting for that. So that's I'm giving you my new theme. Every meeting from now on that Nigel cajoles me to enjoy join will be pushing for a box that I can, uh, installation that I can use right out of the box rather than having to install all the other pieces as a developer, an app developer. This, That's what so the this, I want. Is this getting back to that opinionated install that we were talking about before? Most definitely. It doesn't have to even include tap. I'm not even gonna say we need to go all the way through tap, although that would be nice. I just mean something where like, I have an ingress, I have, um, I have a repository probably but just basically where I can deploy a container, like write some code, deploy a container and I actually can see it rather than here's a container, drop it in and then port forward and do all that other stuff. That's what I mean. Cool. So yeah, if to best understand Steve, exactly what the Steve distribution looks like, 
Um, yeah. would love to see what that issue is and make sure that Roger is aware of it. So from a product management standpoint, we can prioritize it relative to the other things that we have going on. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. And Appreciate the idea, it. Yeah, and, and Steve, the idea of, you know, patterns or meta packages um, is definitely something um, that's in our scope. You know, it was on the high level roadmap, even though there were no proposals for it yet. Um, and TAP, for example, uh, TAP OSS is definitely planning on having a single install for the for their their whole, whole pattern. And oh, okay. So like I would get that, I would actually get like TAP and that would include TCE, their OSS? No, you get TCE, you get TCE and it's TCE would include TAP OSS as well as you know, and it will include the separate modules, but it will also include an um, image package bundle, basically, that you install one thing and it brings all the pieces in the workflow. Okay, and it, I'd have to say, Roger- And we'll really deal with it, with and we'll deal with it at the lower level with Ingress, setting up Ingress and all that. That's a workflow for us to deal with, but I'd love to start with what you see it being. Okay, and Roger, I also wanna commend your bravery I know it may not be a, a, a Star Trek shirt, but I really commend your bravery on wearing what looks like a red Star Trek shirt with the space in the background in a public meeting. To take one for the team like that is really brave of you. I just you, want to let you know. You know it's in the job description, right? Yeah, I know. The red, you're the red shirt. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I just want to call out one quick thing too, not related to Steve's point, um, but just to make sure that I'm not giving off the wrong impression. A lot of the proposals that you all see here do not represent the only work that we're doing. Um, we are still fixing bugs, implementing features. We're going to bring these proposals and their statuses to community meetings just because these are the larger things that impact the project in its direction. And we just want to make sure that everyone in the community is aware of them so that we can get input as we progress. But again, it is only a subset of the work we're doing. I don't want you to think that any bug or issue you file that isn't a proposal isn't is necessarily not going to get worked on so thanks thank you josh and uh folks can still see the the release roadmaps that have the the issues on them yeah you got it um our, our next step roger and i were just talking about it before this call is with the updates to the roadmap roger alluded to we're gonna do a better job of getting one, the roadmap updated, and then two, having those bigger items linked into their proposal. And then upon the proposal being accepted, having the proposal track the many, many work items it would take to realize that. So um, the answer to Nigel's question is yes. And in the future, early 2022, we're gonna have a much better flow here where y'all can see, here's the roadmap, here's the proposal on a technical level that gets us there. And then here's the progress of what we're burning down to achieve that. So Nigel, looking looking forward to that. I think Nigel's question was not only about roadmap.md, but about the milestones and about our yeah. you know, putting together for forward release milestones. Yeah, we'll we'll continue down that track. We have some adjusting to do for 0, 010. 0, um, but yeah, it'll continue to each release will continue to be represented in a milestone. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we have about four minutes left. Does anyone have anything quick they want to bring to the meeting before we uh, before we head out? I'm always very happy to give you time back. Uh, <laughs> looks like that's what it's going to be today. Thank you all so much uh, for coming. Uh, we're going to be out of here until next year. Um, so, you know, the next time you see us, we'll all be one year older, wiser, happier for just have it, have, having had very fulfilling and relaxing holidays, all of that stuff. Uh, thanks so much for sticking in with us since October, since the public release. We very much appreciate you being a part of our community and we will see you next year. Happy holidays. Thanks y'all, bye. <laughs>